Spring Awakening. It's an adaptation of an earlier play set in late 19th century Germany. The tale of a trio of teenagers coming of age sexually and emotionally in a repressive society. And while it may seem counterintuitive to stage an 1891 theater piece with a contemporary indie rock score, the interplay is relatively seamless. The songs in Spring Awakening come across as the angry, passionate subtext of the characters' inhibited, unhappy lives. The success of it has much to do with the versatility of the cast, one of whom is the actor sitting across from me now. Saskatoon-born Kyle Ryabko took up the central role of, is it Melchior or yeah. Melchior? You're Melchior. Melchior yeah, right. yeah. Uh, on Broadway in May 2008, and he's reprising his role on the Spring Awakening Tour. As a performer, Kyle Ryabko has a background in music as well as acting. At 21, he's released a major label debut called The Parkdale Sessions and is open for performers ranging from John Mayer to B.B. King. He had a starring role in the hit Canadian TV series Instant Star, and he just finished shooting a pilot for ABC called Limelight, and now Kyle Riabko joins me in Studio Q. Hello, sir. Hey, how's it going? Very good to hey, have you it, here. You know, it's, it's good to be back somewhere where you can say the word bitch to promote this show. <laughs> it, where can you not say that? In a lot of places. Columbus, Ohio, for one. Really? We, yeah, we've toured. It's, it's interesting being with this show because it's so it has some abrasive lyrics, and, and uh, being in, in certain towns and in yeah. a certain country, it's, you know, it's not always easy. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I saw the show yeah. last night and, of course, saw you in it. And there are moments where uh, I thought, wow, okay, they're, they're really pushing the envelope here. Right. This, is, yeah. uh, this is the uh, uh, the envelope pushing show I've heard about. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and by the way, thank you for coming in despite... Uh, uh, the whirlwind of, of coming back and joining oh, the cast okay. and doing the show last night. Here no, you are the next a, it's morning. It's a joy. Good for you. Uh, um, how how was last night for you? You've have to you've you've had to ship shift back into live theater mode after taking a short leave of absence to to shoot this pilot for ABC, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was very weird. I mean, say it's I, I've been doing this show for almost a year now, eight shows a week, and um, I just took four weeks off to do another project. So it's kind of like a routine that you get into, like brushing your teeth and putting your clothes on every day. And I stopped doing that for four weeks, yeah. and now I'm back in it all of a sudden. So it's a wild thing, and it, it definitely throws your rhythm off, not only off but away. And so coming back last night, you know, opening night for me in, in Toronto, I had no rhythm, and, and it was a beautiful feeling. It was live theater you liked at its it. best. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it was scary, definitely. Very Is it like, scary. like being a touring musician in the sense that midway through the tour, you really start to hit your stride? You're, yeah. You're, you know, your chops are at their best, the same thing in a musical? It's exactly the same. Yeah, I, I've experienced the same thing in music, where you know, you're, it takes you a couple months, usually, with, with the band or with whoever you're playing with to, to actually to feel like you can nail it every single night. And uh, I had that, and then and then stripped it all away. And so now I'm back at this whole this discovery zone again, which is really an exciting place to be, and kind of the most the what we're all striving for at all times. Let me ask you about the discovery zone. But the first time, uh, rewind for a moment here and go sure. back to the beginnings of this eclectic career that you've already carved out. Uh, you, I mean, you started pretty early. Yeah. How, how did what was the first big step for Kyle Riabko? Uh, when I was nine, I, I, my parents bought me a guitar, and I started taking classical lessons. And when I was ten, I formed a band with my with my friends called Ten, Eleven, Twelve. Those were our respective ages, <laughs> and we just uh, we just kind of fell in love with music and realized that you know there's a certain language that we could speak to each other that we couldn't with words, and and so we started jamming, and that that was really the where it all started for me. And, and we, I mean, you you became this sort of. Um, teen sensation. Uh, although I must say, because you have the chops, you're a great guitarist oh, and, and 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 a, a songwriter. I remember seeing you, you know, even not that long ago in Saskatoon. You mm -hmm. were still a teenager when the, when the Junos were there, right? Yeah, and you were right. playing, and and you were playing uh, some some of the showcases there. So y it's true. You start touring at the age of twelve. Yeah, I started touring very young. Yeah, and then you came to play with artists like Jason Mraz and John Mayer and Buddy Guy. And uh, were were you anxious at any point that you were getting all this attention? while you were still honing your musical identity your your voice if you will yeah to be honest it was i was very naive and and i just kind of i had no inhibitions i threw myself in to this world before i had time to grow any inhibitions so i just went with the flow and and very kind of was a very easygoing saskatchewanian and um and uh, as I look back, you realize, yeah, you you know, at a certain point, you do get stifled by the by the business, uh, as opposed to you know going to school for four years and, and honing your craft and not thinking about career, you know. Right. But at the same time, I learned you know so much, uh, not just from the music, but from traveling, from meeting from meeting so many different wacky weird people, from going through, you know, certain hardships in the music business, and and so I think for for me, the way that I like to learn is very hands on 
way, and and I think that th- th- it worked out in the best possible way. Do you cringe when you think of the music that you were making when you were twelve or thirteen? Because no. I mean, as a teenager, you go through a bunch of different styles, yeah. right? You, <laughs> there are certain things you cringe at, yeah. But I mean, if, if for for me, it was just that I wanted to be the fastest guitar player in town, <laughs> and like everybody does. And now right. I realize that wait a minute, they call their clap and slow hand for a reason. <laughs> right. But they, uh, um, so it's so, not always yeah, speed, exactly. Although you had, I mean, you famously, you know, Randy Bachman. There's people who are who are you know big fans of. Of yours and right, you know, yeah, mentors to you, right? I mean, yeah, it was great. I, w- I was what, the, the greatest part about this whole thing was that I was supported by musicians, and 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 uh, the musicians kind of made me realize that I can I can do this, and um, and really what it comes down to is is the guitar for me. Like I, st- I still feel like the only thing that I excel at that I know how to do is play guitar, and all uh, the rest of it has come has spawned from that. Interesting, coming from a guy who's now becoming known for his acting. Yeah. So so about a year or two ago, you start getting involved in this show called Instant Star. Mm-hmm. What was the allure? Of of acting for you, I wanted to express myself in a, in a different way, and I wanted to be able to, um, you know, to use some of the the people skills that I had learned over over time, and, and I just I felt like it, it was just an exciting venture for me, and and the whole the other idea was that I felt like you know the the, the day of the record label is dying. The, you know, the day of, of the usual ways to promote yourself are, are dying. And so I thought, what a great way to kind of three-dimensionalize the, the whole, yeah. the idea of music. And if I can put out music in tandem with another project that's visual, um, you know, let's go for it. So It's so, important to keep the bases covered when you're yeah. as old as you are. Right, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Once, yeah once, Things that the, the, the days are waning. You're, when you're it's almost over, pal. Yeah, 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 I have to live every day like it's my last, man. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you got, you got a long way to go there, buddy. Uh, so, well, so does acting feel, being behind the camera, uh, and we'll get to the stage in a second with the musicals, but did, is, there, is there some safety in that, uh, in that it's not, uh, you don't have the immediate um, uh, ar- ar- arbitration of a live audience, or do you, uh, was it more daunting because you're used to being a musician playing in front of an audience and all of a sudden you're on a set? It's definitely daunting for me because what, I, what I'm used to is being on stage and and being able to control the audience, to, to see where they're at and what they need and to give that to them, you know, in the moment. And with Spring Awakening, when I joined it, I, I had to really learn how to build that fourth wall between me and the audience and not be affected by who they were. Yeah. And because really what, what, what now I'm doing as an actor is telling a story. And I have to tell that story consistently, you know, as opposed to being too over the top just for one night or not the other. So it's really, it was a, it was a new skill that I had to learn. So you're this musician, uh, young musician star that a bunch of us know in the Canadian music business here in Canada. Uh, all of a sudden, about a year ago or so, you get called to New York to audition for a Broadway musical. Yeah. You, you've never even been to a Broadway no, musical. No, I'd never seen one, no. I, I, <laughs> right. yeah, I, I performed Godspell in the Saskatoon uh, High School that I went to. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. So, so what was it like uh, to, to w- walk into this audition for Again, Spring Awakening? Well, what I did was I brought my guitar, and I, I didn't know what the hell I was doing, so I just, I just brought my guitar and played... Um, one of my own songs and just chatted with the guys and and they you know they started to hand out sides and I had to learn these lines and but really it just all I thought you know what am I really doing here oh, let's use what I know how to do so I brought my guitar and it, it went from there so um so I was petrified yeah but a whole new world opened up and when you walked out of that audition did you think that you were a contender um I felt pretty good about it. Yeah, I mean that this team we have such an amazing creative team. We have Tom Hulse, who is you know an amazing producer. You, he played Mozart and Amadeus, so he's like very creative. Oh, yeah. You know that guy. Yeah. He has a very creative mind. He was in the room. Michael Mayer, who's an incredible director, um, and so they were very kind of comforting from the get go. And I felt with them that they weren't necessarily trying to put on a traditional musical. They were trying to cast something with with very raw, strange choices. And I felt like, you know, maybe I was one of those strange choices. So then you end up on Broadway yeah. uh, over the last year. Yeah. What, what, what have you learned from that experience? Um, that eight shows a week is is even harder than it sounds on, on paper. It's a, it's a physical, it's a very physical It's a job. different kind of regimen from being a touring musician? Yeah, see, I, I was so used to playing, you know, seven or eight shows a week as a musician. But, you know, what you're doing in that sense is, is driving to the next city, sound checking, playing the show, and, you know, kind of... Not thinking so much about your health, that's for sure, and and just and continuing to move on. But whereas you know on Broadway, it's really your entire day is focused around the two hours that you're going to spend on stage, mm-hmm. and so you really have to sleep, you have to eat properly, stretch, all that kind of stuff. It's a very, it's a very kind of uh, tunnel vision pressure? world, uh, and there's pressure. Yeah, I mean, I kind of the fact that I came from a different world um, as a musician coming into Broadway was a good thing, I think, pressure-wise, because I didn't know. What the standards were, I had no real idea 
um, what people were thinking I would produce. How do you deal with it as an artist, Kyle? So you, you, I mean, uh, having w- seen you on stage as uh, as a musician uh, yeah. before, I saw you on stage as a as a uh, musical uh, lead last night, yeah. um, or a lead in a musical. Uh, you you tend to jam on stage. Uh-huh. You're, you're, you 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 obviously have uh, not just a gift, but a, a love of a pre, of uh, improvisation. Yeah, you you can't do that when you're in a musical that is being produced. Uh, yeah. around the world and and has you know a character that's already been written and and uh-huh. how are you dealing with being an interpreter rather than a creator? It's a very it's a very different job. That's for sure. It w- it was a struggle for me in the beginning. Now now I've learned to kind of you know, soak in the material and, and become it. And, and every night you kind of live and breathe it differently. But you're right. In the end, you're saying the same lines every night and you're singing the same songs every night. And so, so I, you know, there are other versions of myself that I use to get those, you know, um, to get those feelings. Like, you know, the great thing about this tour is that when we reach a city, I play my own show or two in, in each city that we get mm. to. And, and so that's a really fun way to do that. And now this, you know, acting more on camera for me is, is more like being, uh, a musician because it's a lot more improvisational and mm-hmm. and uh, so there's a lot of different ways to get that but but um what i really said to myself is okay here's a year where you're going to be in this musical it's something you've never done before you're interpreting someone else's material just mm-hmm. go for it and i'm just you know throwing myself in and doing the best i can uh, i don't want to be uh, suggest anything too cynical about this because yeah. I, I you know it's been great for you in terms mm. of the the attention you've gotten and, and the growth that you've had as an artist but but do you have concerns about the fact that as a burgeoning musician with mm-hmm. that career happening yeah. to suddenly put that on hold and go right. do musical theater, which some people to be fair would do even Duncan Sheik, who's written the music for this was a pop star for a while. Yeah. And then he's moved into that. Right. Yeah. Moved, right. Uh, but you've chosen to good to go that path now. Yeah. Uh, do you worry about uh, what that does to your musical career? I don't think so because I've never wanted a traditional musical career. I never wanted, you know, to have, uh, necessarily to have you know a one hit song on the radio tour make another record another hit song on the radio make another that the whole the rhythm of that I've always hated and so um, so my thought is to become more of a three dimensional person like my, my idols have always been people like you know Steve Martin I, I look at him and I see that he can take one year and write a book and another year make a movie another year write a play and so it's just and play the banjo, the, and play, and then yeah. play the banjo. Yeah. That that's like my my ideal life. Just just being able to create, just be a creator. And I and I think that people, especially right now, and especially kids right now, res- really respect that. And um, I think it just gets tiresome the the old formula after a while. So I'd rather be doing wacky, weird stuff and have to explain myself. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you before I let you go here that uh, I, in the papers today mm-hmm. there's news of a film version of Spring Awakening. Yeah, you involved in that? I'm not involved in that. Um, Mick 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 G, who's the uh, who's attached to direct and produce it, is also producing the, the show that I'm filming right now. Um, but um, but no, as of now, it's just kind of like it's just you might a, be. A, well, you know, it's just it's just in the air. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a cagey answer yeah, exactly. from Kyrie Abko. <laughs> and and what what is this show limelight? The show Limelight is is really really fun. It's kind of like um, it, the, the the tone of it. The best way to describe it for me is I don't know if you remember that show Boston Public, but it's like sure. that, but with kids who are going into a conservatory. Um, and so I play a music. This is going to make you laugh, but I play a musician who's you know known as a great guitar player and who's <laughs> going into the school to become an actor. Right. And uh, right, so right, hello right. and uh, and um, no. Did you play required. the guitar in the audition? I, I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, believe yeah, it or not. Yeah. I can't. Yeah. No matter what I do, I can't let it go. <laughs> right. Well, that's good. So you, well, that's the great yeah. thing about this. It just it seems to follow you around. Right. But um, it's a really really fun show, and and I think uh, I think it's going to do well. You think it's going to? Ha- is it going to happen? It's, it's we don't know. We now. don't know yet. Yeah. We find out in a, in a few weeks whether or not it happens. But uh, I'm happy. Congrats. On everything, thank man. you, man. Do, do keep coming back. We yeah, appreciate it. Of course, Kyle Riabko, singer, songwriter, actor. Kyle Riabko currently playing the role of Melchior Gabor in the Tony Award winning musical Spring Awakening. For more information on his music and him in general, kyleriabko.com. We'll put a link to that from our website, cbc.ca.